I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to the men. And as Pastor Scotty talked about, you belong. One of the preachers just read Psalm chapter 8, verse 4, which is, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? That question was asked, and that question always bothered me. And God began to speak to me and said, they asked that question because you are the only people that were made in my image and my likeness. I created everything else. I never gave it my essence, my image, or my likeness. And so the question was asked, who are they that you are so mindful of them that you gave them the ability to create, you gave them the ability to imagine and vision? That's different. This is why as men, we are attacked. This is why as black men, we are attacked because we are not normal people. We are the kings that the king created. Because Jesus is not a king of slaves and a king of servants. He is the king of kings. We're kings. This is why we're attacked the way we're attacked. Because we're made in his image and in his likeness. In in his image, it's not the fact that we look like him physically. You've got to understand, Jesus began to say, my kingdom is not me or drink. So it's not about a physicality. He says, my kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We've got to separate the physical world from the spiritual world. And in order for us to be successful in this life, we've got to start living in the authority of our spiritual mandate. That means when you pray, heaven responds. We may be doing something physical, but there's a spiritual dimension to it. And so this is why we're struggling. This is why we're attacked. This is why so many things are going on is because we have not, we've lost our identity. We spend more time singing songs. We spend more time having conferences. We spend more time doing all these things than operating in the authority and power that Christ has given us. I'm going to be finished soon. I'm just going to go ahead. Let me back up for a minute. Let me give you some. Have a seat real quick. Just sit down real quick. Sit down real quick. Sit down. Sit down. I'm not the preacher. I'm just here to talk to you. And I might slip in a leftover story if you're good, okay? All right, come on. I love this, my lovely wife right there. Thank, I thank God for my lovely wife right here. So watch this, because I'm going to run out of time real quick. But I want you to understand that the attacks that are on our lives, you need to expect them. Don't be surprised. Paul, Paul was trying to teach us in Ephesians chapter 6. He said, finally, my brother, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Watch this. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. In any sports guy, you know, I'm a big sports guy. When a guy has a, when a team has a scheme against you, that's their strategy. That's their plan to stop you. So Paul is always trying to teach us the enemy has a strategy, a scheme, or a plan to stop you as a believer. And so anytime something happens to me, I count it all joy. Because Come on, somebody. Because I know what's about to happen. I'm going to let patience do its perfect work. I'm not walking around crying about the devil's messing with me and he's doing this. I'm not crying about that stuff. I know if the devil has recognized who I am, he sees my authority. He sees who I am. And then it goes on to say, Paul goes on again in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 and 6. You know, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. And Paul is trying to get the church to understand again, stop focusing on all this physical stuff. We are, we are of the flesh. We live in this world, but we are not of this world. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. That means when I speak, devils have to go. That means I have an authority in my voice. My words carry weight. I can decree a thing. I can declare a thing. That's what kings do. We decree. We declare. We don't beg. Stop going to God begging for things. Just open up your mouth and begin to decree a thing. The devil is a lie. I decree prosperity over the next generation. 
We got to step into it, church. See, we've been playing with the devil. And the devil's so happy that we don't even know who we are. But as soon as we step into that place of authority, where he, where he, he knows who we are and he knows his time is done. For the weapons of our warfare are not counted, but they're mighty. That means that you have to know your weaponry. You've got to know your arsenal. You've got to know which weapon to pull out and use when something is coming up against you. Now, let me get to the last part of this. My time is almost running. Hebrews, someone brought up Hebrews. Because the just shall live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Scott, Pastor Scotty talked about uh, the children of Israel looking at the giants. We, men of God, let me say this. And if I had a title for this message, it would be, Don't trust your eyes because your eyes tell lies. Don't trust what you see because we walk by faith and not by what we see. See, you could be looking at your wife in the hospital like I was with tubes in her nose, with stuff all in her arms, and it looks like she's not going to make it. But that's what, what you see. But remember, your eyes tell lies. you got to remember what God said. God said, by his strife, she is healed. Don't trust your eyes. Your eyes tell lies. We live by the word of God. We trust the word of God. Even when Jesus was tempted, that he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Faith comes by hearing, and not just regular hearing, but hearing by the word of God. We live by the word of God. We walk on the word of God. I'm almost done. And so the last part, you need to understand, Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith, faith has to work in the current moment. Now means right now, meaning the faith you had for five years ago is not going to work for the faith you need today. Because you're in a different battle. You're in a different season. You're in a different time. So you need now faith. Faith for right now. Faith for this situation. Faith for this breakthrough. Now faith. Faith is current. It's current. Meaning that whatever your situation is, you need faith for that thing. And then it goes on to say, it's the substance a thing. No, let's deal with that word substance. The word sub means under, like a submarine or subfloor. It means under. The word stance means making a stance. It means faith is something that you stand on. It's something that you stand on. It's now faith. It's something that I stand on. And it says of the substance of things hoped for. You just cannot have faith for nothing. What do you believe in God for? I don't know. I'm just tired. You better put a name on what you believe in God for because it's tied to a hope or an expectation. People ask me to pray for them. It's an um, uh, unspoken request. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know how to touch and agree with you on something. I don't even know. What you believe in God for? If you shame to say it, then you won't even. This is it. It's the things hoped for. And then it's the evidence. Evidence is proof. But watch this. But watch this. It's the evidence of things not seen. Which goes back to what Jesus says. My kingdom is not meat or drink. It's not anything tangible that you can touch. It doesn't even need, it's not needed for this physical body. Because everybody knows we need food and water for this physical body. But Jesus was saying uh, this kingdom is not about a physical body. It's about things you can't touch and things you can't see. See, we scared of the invisible world. But the Bible says faith 
is how the worlds were formed. I'm going to shock you real quick and I'm going to let you go. It didn't say one world. It said worlds. It's talked about two worlds. Jesus is talking about two worlds. Jesus was talking, but matter of fact, let me just leave you with this. You, got, you live in two worlds right now. Why? Because you've got an earthly home and you've got a heavenly home. You've got two worlds that we operate in. But the problem is, we only focus on this world. We only operate in this world. But we don't give our access and authority and mindset to the world that gives us power, that gives us authority, and that gives us dominion. Every man under the sound of my voice, don't believe your eyes. Don't trust your eyes because your eyes lie. Trust every word that has been spoken over you. Trust every word. Trust the word of God. Trust the word. Trust the Bible. And trust what God has said to us. We're the head, not the tail. We're above only and not beneath. So when any situation comes up against you, don't, don't trust your eyes because your eyes lie. Trust what God said. Jesus told Peter, Come. Peter said, if that's, if that's you walking in the water, come. One word activated the faith in Peter to step out on the water. Peter walked on water. He walked on faith until he began to see the wind. He trusted his eyes. His eyes lied. When Jesus pulled him up, he said, why did you doubt? Oh, you a little faith. Which meaning that you got it. You lived it. You broke the limitations of the physical world and up access the heavenly dimension. Until you trusted your eyes. As I close, don't trust your eyes. Trust the word of God.